When it comes to gaming, plenty of games are in the discussion when it comes to being considered one of the best of all time. And I think one of those games that deserves to be mentioned is Fortnite. Now, before you click off the video or leave a comment saying how Fortnite is a kid's game or anything like that, I implore you to watch a little bit further before you come to a conclusion. Because I think when you look at the game as a whole, it has a pretty solid case for being considered in the list. Fortnite originally released back in July of 2017, but it wasn't the Fortnite that we all know today. No, Fortnite at launch was basically a crafting sandbox, base building game with some light hints of survival and tower defense mechanics. Later on, this game mode would be referred to as just Save the World. Because nowadays, when you talk about Fortnite, most people just default to the Battle Royale mode. I'm actually one of the people who had the original Fortnite on launch. I played it for a little bit, but wasn't really intrigued enough to grind it. Because, oh boy, is Save the World a grind. The premise of it is that the world has been overtaken by an apocalyptic threat. Most of the population died off, and the few people left are trying to reclaim the world. I'm going to be honest with you, the story is not one that grips me. Aside from the first intro cinematic, I don't think there's any other cutscenes in the game. Regardless, you're thrown into this world and your objective is relatively simple. Go to different areas, do different objectives. Most of them boil down to grab this item, defend this area. The enemies of this game are known as husks. They're zombie-like creatures that will try to stop your progress by trying to eliminate you or the item that you're defending. As you progress through the story, more enemies come into play, some with ranged attacks and some are beefier than others. The gunplay in and of itself is fine, it's not revolutionary, and the enemies are pretty basic. I don't find myself really enjoying the core gameplay of Save the World for more than like 15 minutes. The gameplay loop of Save the World is fine, but it doesn't do anything in terms of combat significantly better than anything else I've played. Aside from one thing. Building. Save the World came with a unique mechanic that not many games utilize. At least, not using the capacity that Fortnite does. You're able to build structures at any point in time. You gain materials to do this by breaking down any object with your pickaxe. Are you in the middle of a fight and enemies are overwhelming you? You can build walls to impede their progress. You can build stairs to quickly move away from them or get to new areas. The possibilities are essentially endless in regard as to what you can do, albeit with some limitations, but overall building in Fortnite is fast and fluid. Most of the time you end up building some defenses around your objectives to stop the husks from getting in, all while you go and kill them. As you progress through the missions, you'll gain new materials, survivors to recruit to your base, so on and so forth. You can craft new and better weapons, and really start to become pretty powerful as the game progresses. But the enemies do end up scaling with you, so you definitely are going to need higher weapons when you get to the higher levels. The main gripe I have is how boring it is to me. Doing the same defense objectives over and over while just killing the same enemies isn't the worst thing in the world. Plenty of games do it, but it just isn't all that fun. It's super repetitive, and the story doesn't keep me engaged at all. I honestly couldn't tell you much about the story, other than lots of people are dead, go kill some husks. Save the world feels like a grind, and it's not for everyone. But I have a buddy that absolutely grinds it, so there's clearly a market for it, just not as big as some other modes in Fortnite. But plenty of people don't get the appeal of this mode. And when it's released, it seemed like Fortnite was just going to be another game that people played for a few days, but was ultimately going to be forgotten in the long run. But things would change in September of 2017, with the release of Fortnite Battle Royale. Battle Royale came out shortly after the release of Save the World in beta form. Games like PUBG saw that this style of game could really be engaging, and it seemed like Epic Games wanted to take a crack at it. With a unique art style and enough differences in the core gameplay, Fortnite's Battle Royale would quickly become a juggernaut in the gaming world. The premise of any Battle Royale is realistically simple. Typically, about 100 players drop into a large open map and fight to be the last squad standing in an ever-shrinking circle. There are a few key differences in how Fortnite's Battle Royale works, as opposed to other BRs like PUBG. When you land into a game of Fortnite, you can find chests around the different areas of the map. These chests give you weapons or equipment, each with differing rarities. 
For instance, you could get an SMG as a green variant, but the purple variant would do more damage. So the more you looted, the better odds for better weapons. Whereas PUBG has weapons, items, and attachments just thrown about on the floor, Fortnite heavily favored the chest mechanic. You could still find items on the ground, but usually these were not a very high rarities. There was no attachments at the time for weapons, so what you saw was what you got. So it seems pretty cookie cutter, doesn't it? Drop in, grab loot, survive to the end. How did this game mode skyrocket in popularity then? Well, Fortnite's Battle Royale took mechanics from Save the World and implemented them into their BR. Such as destructible environments. Pretty much any building or structure could be broken down. There are some objects that could not be broken, but for the most part, almost anything could be destroyed. But the real draw that Fortnite's BR had over its contemporaries was building. Much like in Save the World, you could break down structures to gain materials at any point in time in the match, and at any point you could switch to your building mode. So if you wanted to get to a higher point of elevation for a better vantage point, you could build up to it. If you were in the middle of a fight, you could build structures to either protect yourself or to help close the gap between you and your opponent. Back in the early days of Fortnite, the different structures were not mapped to different buttons and thermal building was not a thing, meaning building was slower and a little bit more annoying to do. Being a fresh new game, most people took quite some time to build anything more than a basic four walls and stairs pretty quickly. The gunplay was satisfying enough for a BR, the movement, while not what it is now, felt pretty good at the time, and the map was great. A variety of locations and different buildings to look through, much like any other Battle Royale map. The OG map is one of my favorites of all time from Fortnite. Maybe it's nostalgia, but the Fortnite OG season really cemented how much I love that original map. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. When Fortnite started to become popular, some people wondered what Epic would do to keep this game fresh. You could only do the same thing for so long before it became stale. So in true live service fashion, we got constant updates. As the game kept going, we would receive new weapons, equipment, and map changes. Live events that would progress the story or change the map in certain ways would become more common after time. You could play Fortnite one month and then come back in a different month and some POIs would be changed or removed entirely. The ever-changing map would help keep the game from becoming stale. In as Season 1 rolled around, we got even more stuff to work towards. As you kept playing and leveling up, you would gain access to purchase new cosmetics. The higher level you were, the more things you could potentially buy. Now, initially these items weren't that cool looking, and the only reason people really like them now is because of the scarcity of them. But it would set the building blocks for what was to come in this battle royale. Come with the launch of Season 2, we got the first traditional battle pass in Fortnite, with two distinct paths to go down. Both had the same amount of tiers, which was only 70 in the beginning. Progressing through the free track would net you some rewards, but the really cool stuff was on the paid side. For 950 V-Bucks, this game's currency, you could gain some even better looking rewards. Much like all the battle passes now, there's a bunch of filler content in every single battle pass, like emotes or banner icons, and... By emotes, I don't mean like dances, I mean like little emojis that you could equip and show off in game. Not emotes like what we have now, that I don't really consider to be filler. Progressing all the way through the battle pass would give you the Black Knight skin, which if you have today pretty much shows your commitment to the game. I myself didn't get to tier 70, but I did pay for the battle pass, so I at least have the Squire Knight outfit to show that I'm a true OG. As seasons in Fortnite would progress, we would get more battle passes, more map changes, and more weapons to go along with it. We would see more items in the shop page as well, so you could grind and pay for the battle pass or just straight up buy some items from the shop. The shop items were different from those in the battle pass, so there was no double dipping. But I'm not going to chronicle each and every season here, that's not the point of this video. Instead I'm showing you how this game became what it was today. More map updates and more seasons would come ahead in Season X or Season 10. And once the season ended, there was one last event. The End. This event would see a rocket be launched, similar to an event from earlier in the seasons. And once everything was over, the game went dark. A black hole was all that consumed the game, leaving you unable to play this now hyper-popular BR. Was this the end for Fortnite? No, of course not. As time went by, some numbers would appear on the screen and some recordings could be found. These things would progress the story for those who cared, but most people just wanted to play the game. 
After two days of nothingness, the next chapter of Fortnite was unleashed. Starting anew for the mode, Chapter 2 Season 1 saw us dive into a brand new map. With better and improved looking graphics, revamped movement, and a bunch of new mechanics, Fortnite seemed to take its popularity in stride and make some beneficial changes to the game. As the game would progress, some people, including myself, got turned off by the constant building. You could put one bullet into somebody and they would immediately build a 10 story condo. While build battles could be fun, especially in the early days of Fortnite, it certainly got annoying for me after a while. Epic took some of this criticism and eventually added a no build mode. A mode in which, well, you guessed it, you couldn't build. The mode brought a lot of players back who left due to the constant building, myself included. You could call it a skill issue, but I genuinely enjoy zero build more than I do the standard builds mode. It still has its sweats, what game doesn't, but I find the overall experience to be less about who can build hyper fast and trap somebody, and more about gun skill. While there's still some annoyances in some elements of the gameplay, Zero Build showed that Epic was still listening to their community and could support multiple things at a time. As the game kept evolving, so did the map, weapons, and items available. Plenty of well-known public figures have done official collaborations with the game. From Ariana Grande to Mr. Beast and gaming legends like Kratos and Master Chief. At this point, I'm more surprised when something or someone hasn't done a collaboration with Fortnite. With some of these collaborations, we've gotten special limited time events. We've had concerts with Marshmello, Travis Scott, Ariana Grande, and Eminem. Fortnite has ever evolved into something special, and I'm sure there's more big events and collabs in the works. With the most recent season at the time of this script being Chapter 5 Season 1, with Season 2 being out by the time that this goes live. It seems like Epic Games and Fortnite have no signs of slowing down. The game keeps pushing out content left and right, and there's always something new to do. Sure, some updates are divisive, and maybe not every change has been for the better, but the core gameplay in and of itself in Fortnite is actually really fun, and the Battle Royale has been around for well over 6 years at this point, and it's still insanely popular. But the Battle Royale isn't the end all be all for Fortnite it seems. It seems to be just the start. Back in 2018, Fortnite added Creative Mode, where you could make and build your own world. It started off pretty basic, but has since evolved into a thing of its own. Creative is now more akin to Roblox in the way that any user can create their own map and modes. If you're sick of Battle Royale, you can load into a gun game lobby on an original map or maps like Nuketown or Terminal from the Call of Duty series. Users have a near endless set of possibilities for what they can create. We have the aforementioned gun game modes, obstacle courses, puzzle games, and even some horror-esque experiences. Hell, even the band Avenged Sevenfold has dabbled into the Fortnite space by creating maps that utilize the band's artwork and music in them. And even with all of these options to choose from, Epic Games still wasn't done. They showed that they can create a fun and engaging battle royale and support their user-created maps and modes. But there was still more on the table. During the Big Bang event, we got glimpses of the next additions into the game. These would be Fortnite Festival, Rocket Racing, and LEGO Fortnite. All of which were released a few days apart from one another, with LEGO being on December 7th, Racing on the 8th, and Festival being on the 9th. Festival is pretty much just Rock Band. It almost needs no explanation. You select what song you want, either by the rotating daily picks, or you can choose something if you decided to buy a track, or if you have any unlocked. Select your instrument difficulty, and much like Rock Band or Guitar Hero, play through the song and try to hit all the notes possible. Epic Games constantly adds new songs into the mode, and it's honestly quite enjoyable. I'm a sucker for the Rock Band games, so having a free version of that that I can play is pretty nice. Given there are some shortcomings with this mode, those being that at the time of recording, there isn't an absurd number of songs, but there's enough to get by. The daily rotation of songs is really cool because while I enjoy the mode, I'm not going to spend 500 V-Bucks or what is almost $5 for a singular song. My biggest gripe with the mode is that there's no support for Rock Band instruments. Though this is supposed to be coming around at a later date, it's not available at the time of this video. 
There is a workaround on PC, but for any console players, you're going to have to get used to using a controller for the time being. While I've grown used to the controller, I find a Rock Band guitar much easier to navigate for these style of games. Certainly, the harder the song, the more annoying it is to play on the controller. Come to think of it, it kind of makes global leaderboards a little bit useless, because I'd assume that those who play on PC with the guitar have an advantage over controller users. If I had the ability to use one of my guitars, I'm certain I could full combo most of the songs here and even get higher scores than I already have. But I digress. While Festival is fun and I do really enjoy playing it, there's other modes mentioned earlier that also got added around the same time. Rocket Racing is just a basic arcade style racing mode. You can customize your vehicle with some items carrying over from Rocket League. Albeit, not a lot of items transferred, but at least something did I suppose. You load up into one of the tracks designed by the devs and race your way through the tracks with the goal to, well, be first. There's the features you've come to expect in many arcade racing games, like a boost at the start of the match if you time it just right, drifting, and a boost meter that you can activate to get extra speed so long as you have enough charge. Rocket racing does do some things a little bit differently though. Your vehicles can jump much like they do in Rocket League, and you have the ability to change the orientation of your vehicle in certain sections. So if you're going through a tunnel, you can either stay on the main road, or switch to the roof or the walls. On some tracks, there's obstacles which you definitely want to avoid. These glowing orange blocks exist just to make you utilize the different abilities that your vehicle has. Because if you hit one, your speed will be drastically reduced. Meaning you need to avoid these if you want to keep your position close to the top. In the higher leagues in the ranked mode of this, people definitely know the best routes and strats. So it's clear that the better you are, the more challenging the experience. Rocket racing is fun, but it's not going to be the main reason I decided to boot up Fortnite, but it's a welcome addition to the game for me. It can be some mindless fun for a little bit here and there if I'm getting tired of the other modes. Lastly, we have the aforementioned LEGO Fortnite. Where creative is akin to Roblox modes and festival is like Rock Band, LEGO is much like Minecraft, an open world survival crafting experience. You spawn in on your randomly generated world with nothing and have to get materials and items to craft into more useful items and really just progress through the different territories. It really is very basic, much like the original Minecraft was. There's no official endgame, just crafting and building. There is progression in terms of your base level and the items you can make, but there's nothing that would trigger like end credits or anything like defeating the Ender Dragon does. So there is a finite amount of things to do, but it really is all about your creativity in building. As you upgrade your home base, you're able to get more blueprints for building. You have a bunch of different options for building in LEGO. You can go with a homebrewed structure and just build based off of what you have unlocked, creating your own unique building, or you can utilize the presets. These presets come in a variety of different builds, and it's mainly what I end up using in LEGO Fortnite. Mostly because my creativity is pretty low when it comes to building structures. You can select what it is you want to make and the game will basically walk you through it. So long as you have sufficient materials, you'll be able to complete it. Like I said, this is how I tend to build up my bases, but you can just free build if you prefer. The option is there. With a bunch of different biomes, enemies, and materials to collect, LEGO Fortnite is surprisingly fun. Much like the rest of the game, they keep updating it with new content such as things to make or build. You can stay put near your spawn or explore the world and get into different biomes and expand your horizons. It's a pretty chill experience and it's one that I find myself just playing with no clear objective other than to just run around collecting and building things. Sometimes I'll go out of my way and try to kill some of the enemies, get better loot, but realistically it's all about collecting items and building up your base. and trying to get the biggest base possible and making cool builds in the long run. I find a lot of enjoyment in playing LEGO Fortnite, especially with my friends. So with all of these things that we just talked about, one question remains, and that is... It's safe to say that Fortnite has come quite a long way since its inception. From a less than stellar zombie survival game to a juggernaut of the gaming world, Fortnite doesn't have a clear end in sight. 
Epic keeps pumping out content into this game, and with an extremely large community, there's going to be plenty of user-generated content for quite some time too. I think that what makes Fortnite even part of the conversation is the sheer amount of content that there is. Sure, games like Roblox have a ton of users and content, but I wouldn't consider it one of the greats. Fortnite clearly has something special in its DNA. It's not just a kid's game, though the art style may lead you to believe that it is. There's always something to do, always new content being added or made by the community. And whether you want a single player co-op experience that I'm pretty sure is dead because I never see any news about Save the World anywhere, a battle royale, or just to kick back and play something casual like Lego, you have your options. Fortnite is more than just a very fun battle royale game. It's now an entire world built up of different parts. Parts that almost anyone can find something that they enjoy in. When you look back at where it came from to where it is now, it's clear that this game is not just a gimmick. It's built up a huge community with millions of people that come back to play it. And it is genuinely very fun to play. Not a ton of games have that kind of longevity that Fortnite has. Sure, you can name some other games that have been around for years, World of Warcraft, CSGO, COD, the list does go on and on. But with everything that Epic Games has built up with this game, I think it's clear that Fortnite deserves some praise for what it's accomplished. And it deserves to be in the conversation when it comes to some of the best games of all time. Whether you like the game or not, it's clearly more than just a fad. And that's going to do it for this video. How do you feel about Fortnite? Are you still playing it constantly? Do you come back every once in a while to try it out? How do you like the new modes? Let me know what you guys think and let's continue this conversation down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.